So hi, Margaret and Dylan and, and Joe. How are you all today? Are you well? We're well, thanks. It's great to see you and I'm delighted that you've come along to chat with me today about um, this project that I'm doing and, and we've been having a lovely few conversations with people around the oral trans, the transmission of our traditions like recitations, lilting songs, music and how they, they transmit through families within generations of families and communities. So we're here today really to chat about recitations and we have Joe O'Connor here with us. Um, and Joe, uh, I have the pleasure over the years to have listened to Joe um, on his wonderful recitations and his own compositions. And then we have Dylan, oh, Dylan Corey here from County Clare too, and his mom Margaret. So, um, Dylan, I came across you through recitations through Scorn and Oak, your performance as a Scorn and Oak, and um, through The Fla. Um, and I was mighty impressed at someone so young taking on um, something so important. Um, can you tell me when that all came about? How did that happen? Well, I think it all really started going to our speech and drama in in um, uh, yeah, uh, in, in the parish. In the parish. And at the end of the year, you'd have to recite a poem. Okay. And I loved it. Okay. I done well the first year anyway. So I thought I could advance it to longer poems and enter in um, in um, uh, uh, in um, a competition. I, having chatted with you and your mom um, over, over the past few weeks, your your recitations, what you have been doing um, up to now, how old are you now? I am 11 years old. 11, okay. So what you've been doing up to now have kind of, you like the humorous ones, the humorous um yeah. written verse okay so so when myself and joe were were chatting about one that you might like to take up from joe and and learn um it is it's a bit more of a serious one it's a lament for the late robbie mcmahon um yeah. so maybe we'll um chat with joe about that wonderful uh, recitation um joe the late robbie mcmahon has come up in this project three times through um, the Lilters were mentioning him um, as we listened to him on the Irish Traditional Music Archive, um, Lilting and through Traditional <laughs> Song. And he was a dear friend of yours and, and you had the pleasure of, of knowing Robbie rather well. Um, is there anything in particular that um, you could tell Dylan about Robbie and myself because I never had the pleasure of meeting Robbie McMahon? I first met Robbie, oh my God, um, when I was quite young, I was probably about Dylan's age. And my father introduced me to him at Flakiel, and we remained best friends for, I suppose, 50 years. And um, he won All Ireland's for singing, for lilting, and for newly composed songs. And when he died in 2012, December 2012, I was asked to um, speak at his graveside. And as I was driving to Clooney Church for his general mass, I put this lament together. I wrote it down when I came home. And um, I suppose there's a, a bitter sweet thread running through it. Very happy memories of the man and the sense, the great sense of loss as well. Um, will we will we let Joe talk you through then the the recitation? Will we do that before yeah. we, we, we hear you um yeah, try it? Right. Okay, perfect. So Joe, do you want to um talk him through the, the, the verses? I will indeed. I will indeed. Yeah. Now um it's common enough to hear songs sung or tunes played at the graveside of singers and musicians as they're being laid to rest, or indeed as uh, happened in Kilmac Duan and Cura Clare at Marty Marnham's funeral, a set was danced uh, as he was being buried. I gave the graveside oration at Marty's funeral as well. Um, but um, in the first verse, as we stood by your graveside and sang your soul to heaven, my heart with grief was breaking and I turned my head to cry. Soon I stood there on my own 
as the sky shed bitter teardrops. With my mind so full of memories, it was hard to say goodbye. Now that establishes the fact that the one uh, thing I have left is our memories of the man who is now gone. And uh, it's necessary to progress to mentioning some of those memories. Yeah. Um, do you want them to, 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 to recite a bit for us so we can hear it, Dylan? Okay, brilliant. Right. Lovely, Good the man Dylan. As we stood beside your graveside and sang your soul to heaven, my heart with grief was breaking and I turned my head to cry. Now I stand here on my own, as the sky sheds nature's teardrops, with my mind so full of memories, that it's hard to say goodbye. Ah, those great songs that you sang, they'll ring in my ears forever. Songs like the Red Cross Social and the Great Barge of Armagh, with a song that touched my soul, fashioned by a master wordsmith, was the one you wrote in 56 about that famous Ennis flag. When the mast struck Sean McGuire, Heard you lift the mason's apron. He warmly shook your hand to hear you was such a thrill. And the song you made your own is known throughout the world. For where great singers gather, they all sing a spansive hill. When the first Friday comes again, and we gather in my dugums, and your impish smile is missing, and your grape eyes hushed and still, we'll tell stories of the good times, and we'll sing songs in your honour. And we'll keep that flame still burning that you lit on Spencer Hill. Now I've said my last goodbye, and I turn away in silence, but my mind keeps wandering back to the happy times we see. We thank God for having known you, but it breaks our heart to lose you. May you rest be peaceful, Robbie. We won't see your likes again. Good man. Oh, that's brilliant, Dylan. Good man, Dylan. Well done. Well done. Well, I let you all off and thanks a million for, for joining me. It's been a pleasure listening to you and learning from you, Joe. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And Dylan, right. I'll be in touch and we'll look forward to hearing you. Well done today. You did fantastic. Thank you. Mind hey. yourselves. Hi, Liam. Hi, Noel. How are you? Hello. Hello, Rachel. It's great to have you here with I'm delighted that you're coming to chat with me today. As you know, the project um, that I'm doing, I'm exploring the transmission of our traditions like lilting, song, music, the Irish language, and how they have kind of transmitted through generations within families and in communities. So um, lilting is what I've, I'm coming to chat with you guys about, but maybe we'll start with your dad, Liam, if that's OK. Um, and okay. Noel, music would have been in your family. That's right, uh, Rachel. <clears throat> my uh, my dad and my granddad, they, they all played the fiddle. Okay. And my aunts as well, they all played music. And uh, there was a lot of music in the house when we were growing up. And your dad, was your dad in a Cayley band over in Clare? Yeah, he he, he played in the, the Inchy Cronin Cayley band right. back in the early 80s. Okay. okay. And uh, would have played with Martin Hayes, was very young at the time. He was in that band and um, Francie Donlan and uh, there was a few of the Donlans in it and um, you know there was there was Garo with O'Halloran was there as well okay. you know, Claire. and um, they, they went to the All-Ireland up in Bondoran I think okay. and they came third in it and they had a great weekend in it anyway <laughs> and um, but he would have played a lot in you know, South Galway, Gort, uh, would have been his hometown. Okay. And uh, played in Corrafin a lot. You know, that's that circle around there, uh, Crusheen. You know, but would, he would have gone to um, Jack Mulcair, taught him how to, taught him the fiddle uh, years and years ago. That's Desi's father. Okay. And um, he would have cycled up to up to Crusheen maybe once a week to, to get lessons. And um, then his, his father had been playing as well, John, John Clancy, he had... He had played a lot back in the twenties and thirties, and in, in um, you know at weddings and house or parties. They used to house house dances that time, and that was, there was no halls, I think, at the time. So they were all just dances at, at each other's houses. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Liam, 
when did all this start with you and lilting? Uh, well, um, I suppose I was going to same classes with the Del Vaughan oh, in Pushy. Kilinora, uh, she's in the Kilfenora Kaylee Band, is that right? Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. And when I was only about eight, like, and she, I was getting songs every week, like, and she gave me a song, which was called uh, Miss Gilhooley's Party. Oh, okay, yeah. And there was a bit of Lilton in the song, mm -hmm. and then it kind of just took off from there, like, she said, oh, you should try that, like. So I was in the flat then the next year and stuff. Um, what I've noticed, I suppose, I've been listening to um, a few different lilters over the past while since I, I started the project and just trying to get a feel for it. Um, and what I'm, I'm getting from it, and I, something I'd like to ask you, is um, listening to late, the late Jimmy Ward, listening to Robbie McMahon and uh, Bobby Gardner, um, you know, the, the wet-tuned accordion player and lilter, um, there's... There seems to be the lilting sound seems to be very unique to each individual and somehow they they're mimicking the instruments that they're playing and I'm wondering you play the banjo and the flute so your lilting sounds do they do you find that you bring some of those mimicking sounds of the instruments you're playing into your lilts or have you noticed uh, that? I suppose yeah you put in variations that you do in the banjo and stuff yeah I put in a few triplets and stuff, you know. So. so it must have felt great to come first in your your home county, was it? A great. That was great. Yeah, it's good. Do you remember the first lilt? I mean, the the lilt I sent on to you of um, Robbie McMahon um, doing the Mason's Apron, I think it was the recording from the ITMA. Do you remember the first lilt that you started, apart from the one with the Dell uh, within the songs? Do you remember the first lilt that you you started to do? Um, I think it was the Tullerie, just okay. the Tullerie, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Your journey within lilting. What way do you foresee it going? Do you have? Um, uh, lessons or, or do you just develop yourself with your own research and and listening to recordings? Uh, well, when I'll be coming up to a fly, like you tell, give me a hand just with the tunes I'll be doing and stuff. And I, well, I just kind of do it myself, like and in the future, like, um, sure, I might teach a bit of it if I can. Okay. And people want to learn it like but i don't know sure. we'll see. And, and what do you what do you think you know how do you think you would teach it i mean um i was thinking you know i was kind of trying to think back to you know when it lilting when the older people the older lilters were lilting and and the how they actually used lilting you know as a great memory aid for tunes and it was you know, it was ingenious really to you know to keep the tunes alive to you know when they weren't able maybe to carry their instruments with them or how do you foresee your teaching? How would you how would you approach the teaching of it? <sighs> I know that's a, a, a strange question to put you on the spot, but how would you how do you foresee teaching? Well, it? What is it that you know that you feel is the essence of it within you that you know you would you know if I said to you here's a here's a, a young little lad six years of age. You know, what would you what would you do? What would you say to him about lilting? Well, I'd start him off singing first. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Just do what I did then, give him a song with lilting in it, like, and just see if he's good. Like, you either have it or you don't, I suppose. Okay. So I wonder, would you concur with this? Would you agree with me? He said the older people, the older lilters used to say no lilting, no teeth, no lilting. So no teeth no lilting. So he said that you had to have a good set of teeth for lilting. Well, uh, <laughs> I have a good set of teeth, so I can't really. Uh, but I did read a bit about you saying that, Edel, um, you had told you that I think chocolate, having chocolate before the fla or any competition, mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't have chocolate because it would make your throat tickly. Is that right? Did I read right? Yeah. She just told me that, yeah. She was always telling me that, no chocolate, I need that. Okay, okay. Just, it's the same when you're singing. Yeah. I remember it's because uh, we were at one singing class and she said, geez, your throat sounds tickly. <laughs> okay. And she asked me to eat chocolate and I had like, 
So that's why she she told me that day. So, yeah. yeah. And that she'd give you a, a, a Yorkie bar when you were finished. Yeah, well, I haven't done that in a while now. I used to like Yorkie bars. Like. You've moved on, have you? Yeah. What yeah, is it now? You just don't know. Yeah. Well, well, will we get a lilt from you then, Liam? I'm dying to hear you. I've I've had the pleasure yeah. of hearing you on at the Flas, but um, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing you now. Uh, sure, I might do uh, Miss McLeod's. Lovely. Read. Lovely. Okay. I won't get up and dance. I'll just sit and listen. If that's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Dum. <clears throat> Dum. Dum daddle dee and dad and the breed idle dad and the breed up. Had eaten tat and the breed idle dad and the breed down the breed and dad and the breed idle dog. Had a little dad and the breed idle dee and the breed up. Had a little Yep. Brilliant. Well done. Gorgeous. Brilliant. Really enjoyed that. Well, thanks a million, Liam and, and Noel. I really had a, a lovely time chatting with you all and I uh, hope to see you again soon when we can we can meet in person. But in the yeah, meantime, really. mind yourselves and Very uh, okay. keep up the great work, Liam. Thanks, Dad. Right. For Thank you. Thanks a million. Thanks very mind much. Bye. Bye. Thanks for that. Slan, mind yourselves. Bye. Hi, Aoife. How are you? Hi. I'm great. How are you guys? We're good. We're good. Thanks a million for coming along and chatting with me again. Um, the last time we met, we were chatting about your granddad, John Kelly, and his wonderful um, collection of tunes. And we chatted about you picking a tune for Era and Cullen yeah. and that they were going to learn it and play it at the next event, the next part of the project when we, we get to, to see you again. So we're all excited to hear what tune you, you decided. Great, it's a lovely old tune. It's called the Old Concertina Reel. Uh, some people call it John Kelly's Concertina Reel. So there's a really famous Concertina Reel that everybody plays on the Concertina and actually that is quite a hard tune to play on the concertina. So I think it originally was played in a different key and then it changed on the concertina. But this old concertina reel is a really, really nice uh, tune and um, it's really easy to play in the concertina as well. It's a lot in the middle row of the concertina. So okay. um, it's a lovely tune. And um, I think a lot of people that I teach it to kind of get a little bit addicted to it. It's just a really nice tune with a lovely air and you kind of get a little bit... Um, I think people kind of fall in love with the tune. It's just a really nice tune. Okay. Okay. And do you do you know where your granddad got it from, or no? It, no. I, I I the only thing I know about it is that I, um that he got it from 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 he, the playing around West Clare, but that could mean anything. I mean that could be from his family on Scattery. That could have been somebody from Kerry. That could have been anything. Okay. So I actually don't know too much about the history of of of, of that tune. Yeah. Okay. But you love playing it. 
Yes, I really do. It's really, really nice. So are you happy with Aria? Yeah, very happy with yeah. Aria. Uh, what, what way are you, what do you think you're going to play it on? Probably me and the fiddle and then him on the piano. Nice yeah. stuff. You nice on the piano. Together, okay, yeah. okay. So fiddle and piano. That's a, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, would you mind playing it for us so that we can hear it? No problem at all. Great. It's a lovely tune, isn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't hear that that often either, right? No, no, no. Hear that no. Often, no. no, it's lovely. Yeah. Well, they're going to, yeah. you've set them a challenge to now that, to go yeah. off and, and learn that and, and have it um, on fiddle, you said. Yeah, and fiddle. you're going yeah, to try yeah. it on the piano. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll the play it, they'll play it for you. Sorry. Multi instrumentalists there that can play. <laughs> well, they're going to try. Thanks yeah. a million for, for, for choosing that tune. And um, mm -hmm. I'm sure your granddad would would love all the work that you're doing and, and passing on all the wonderful tunes that he's collected. And um, oh, yeah. it's nice to get them played a bit more, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. And to have different tunes because a lot of the same tunes are played over and over. So it's kind of yeah. nice to, 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 yeah. to have the other ones that we just play. So it, it, it's really nice to share them with people. I love it. Brilliant. Well, thanks a million, Aoife. Uh, we look forward to hearing it now and uh, we'll keep in touch. And if they have any questions, I'll pop them on to yeah, you. But, absolutely. Yeah. No problem at all. Thanks a million, Eva, for Thanks your time. Thanks. 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 Bye. Bye. Bye.